Biology of the sunfish. The sunfish or mola or mola mola is the heaviest known bony fish in the world. It is found in the tropical and temperate parts of the oceans. The fish has a very unique appearance, with the body being almost truncated in at half the total length of the fish. It also has a strange looking protrusion in the back that resembles half a tail fin. In addition, the skin is covered by a layer of mucus, which looks like patches of clouds on the fish. The mola mola has a relatively small mouth for its size, and it is thought that this is due to its main diet, consisting of soft-bodied animals. Despite being a powerful swimmer, having been recorded with a speed of as high as 3 meters per second, most of the time sunfish would just float on the surface of the water, often basking in the sun. This gives them the name sunfish. It is an interesting habit for the sunfish to come to the surface of the water, but this is the only known way for the fish to regulate its body temperature. Also, by doing so, the sunfish allows seabirds to feed on the parasites that they carry, providing a way of cleaning for the birds and relief for the sunfish at the same time. The sunfish has the ability to produce a great number of eggs. It is estimated that a sunfish is capable of producing 300 million eggs at once. However, only a fraction of these eggs would mature to become adult mola. Adult sunfish often play host to a variety of animals. It is common to find more than 40 different species of parasites living on a single mola, and it is possible that in total they weigh more than the fish itself. As a result, researchers believe that the mola mola has developed a highly effective and active immune system. This is thought to be particularly interesting because the sunfish belong to the class of Ostectes, which also includes humans. There are hopes that research and understanding the immune system of the sunfish will lead to medical breakthrough for humans. Physical Characteristics of the Sunfish The body is laterally compressed and retains a feebly oval shape that is looked at from the most notable. The sunfish's body is higher than it is extensive, and when looked at from the side, it looks very tall. It's the heaviest of all bony fish but has a comparatively short length, calculating just over 1.8 meters in the longest situations. The body of the sunfish ends in a specific unique group of fins. The dorsal fin length stretches along all of the sides of the body down and can wrap around the following. The dorsal fin could go from the center of the rear to reduce than halfway, nevertheless, and the color trait of the sunfish remedies in understanding which of the two species is being viewed. The tail fin is just another feature of the tendencies of the sunfish. The tail is freely attached and is a direct extension of the body. Sunfish have the aforementioned tail fin at the conclusion of the body, but an added feature that solidifies the identity of the fish's body is the clavis, a toughened, elongated extension of the tail located at its base which continues to the body. The clavis is seldom found as it's a unique feature to the sunfish and offers an instantaneous classification tool. There are two principal species of sunfish, Mola Mola, which lives in the Indo-Pacific and oceans along the eastern seaboard of America, and Mola Ramsayi, found in the temperate and tropical ocean sunfish. These two distinct species and their customs have been studied for many years and are today becoming more understood. The Mola Mola is the species described above, known in European oceans as very well as the lead to the species. However, there are an extensive variety of subtypes and genetic variations of the two species that are being discovered and described in academia today. Feeding Habits and Diet The sunfish's feeding habits are just as strange as the fish itself. This time, it's the fish's skeletal structure. To understand this, you have to know a little bit about how most bony fish usually breathe. Oxygen passes from water through a fish's gills. In most fish, if the mouth opens, the gills close. This creates a protective mechanism to the fish. When they eat, most fish will continue to breathe regularly and use the water to help move food down the esophagus. But the sunfish is an exception to that rule. Sunfish have a unique system where the fish's mouth is completely separate from the gill arches. So no matter how wide the sunfish mouth opens, it in no way affects the gills. This provides support to the idea that sunfish are gulpers. Unable to chew their prey, sunfish use their large mouth to create a powerful suction and draw prey into the mouth. It's been suggested that their unique jaw structure 
and the powerful suction ability has been an excellent example of how evolutionary traits can develop to satisfy a certain feeding habit or lifestyle over time. But the unusual biology of the sunfish doesn't stop there. Researchers have discovered that the sunfish is the first species of bony fish known to be warm-blooded. This was discovered by accident. Some researchers wanted to learn more about the muscles in sunfish and other kinds of sluggish deep sea fish. They were surprised to find that the muscles could be as warm as 10 degrees above the surrounding water temperature. However, even though it's convenient to describe the sunfish as warm-blooded, it's not really an accurate description. True warm-blooded creatures, like mammals, can maintain a relatively consistent internal body temperature regardless of the surrounding environment. This ability, known as endothermy, allows for a high level of activity and has been proposed as one of the explanations for the success of mammals in colonizing almost every corner of the globe. In contrast, the sunfish is what's known as tachymetabolic. While it's true that the muscles are warmer than the surrounding environment, the sunfish's internal body temperature still fluctuates with water temperature to some extent. However, their body's relative in being able to produce heat itself, which in turn can sustain higher levels of activity, is quite an interesting discovery in the development of fish species. Reproduction and Life Cycle The sunfish is known to engage in the behavior of sunning, which, unlike its very own name, is not connected in any way to the biological progress of giving birth to live young ones in the species. During the practice of sunning, the sunfish will come to the top of the water and lie still on its side, allowing seagulls to come and feed on parasites that reside in the skin of the fish. It's essential to know that sunfish give birth to a large number of eggs at a time, often areas of over 300,000. Not only the number of eggs, but also the eggs are giant, about the size of a pinhead. These eggs, once formed in the ovaries or testes, need to pass via the body of the skin and go out via the mouth. This stage is known as ovulation. The male and female sunfish can be known by sneaking up next to a male or female and releasing its milk or sperm while they have their ovulation event. Once the eggs have been fertilized, they will begin to swell and within a female sunfish, and after some time, the baby sunfish, known as fishlets, will hatch and take position in the water. These hatchlings are no joke when it comes to birth sizes. They peak out at 2.5 millimeters length. When sunfish juvenile grows, it will resemble the appearance of a normal one, but not until it can reach the fourth of its existing full adult length is it contemplated an adult. Like many other fish species, sunfish is also subject to the pain of predators, and for that reason, its lifespan is not very long, only accounting for a half many years. However, biologists and researchers still have not come to a complete understanding of the biology of sunfish, and much more studies are requisitioned in terms of this aspect. Adaptations and Survival Strategies Apart from its various unique biological characteristics, the sunfish has also developed a number of different adaptations and survival strategies to help it stay alive in its natural habitat. When it comes to the structure of the fish, its body design is particularly suited to slow and energy-efficient movement. In the water, a great deal of resistance is placed on moving organisms, so streamlined body shapes have been favored through natural selection as they are more hydrodynamic and allow better and faster movement through the water. However, the sunfish does not have this shape and its body is overall very rough and irregular. In response to this, it has developed a very unique way of swimming. Instead of using its back fin to propel itself forward as most fish do, the sunfish flaps its top fin, as though it's an oar on a boat, so it moves through the water in a very slow but constant way. This method of swimming is a useful adaptation for the fish, allowing it to travel with less effort and to effectively move into different underwater regions for feeding more easily. The sunfish's primary adaptation for hunting and feeding is simply its size. By growing to such a huge size with a distinctive shape, the fish does not have to be particularly quick or stealthy in order to avoid predation. In fact, it is thought that adult sunfish have no natural predators other than man. This is because their size makes them an unprofitable target. It would take a predator a lot of time and energy to successfully subdue a sunfish. 
Being huge also helps when it comes to dealing with parasites. It is well documented that sunfish will visit cleaning stations in the water where smaller fish and crustaceans, called cleaner fish, supervise. These cleaners feed on parasites and dead skin in and around the mouth of the sunfish in a mutual symbiosis. The cleaner fish get a meal and the sunfish gets a free dental checkup. Such behaviors have been well documented over the past 30 years through field observations, leading to insight into how ecological interactions work. The sunfish is known to visit these cleaning stations all over the world as certain species of cleaner fish are essential to its survival. This clearly ties in with the adapted features seen around the mouth of the fish, such as fleshy lips used for sucking in and stationary bony elements in the jaw, which facilitate a beak-like edge.